So this is Creality's newest offering of 3D printer, the K1. And this is definitely a pretty quick 3D printer as you can see. It's also fully enclosed, and even at these high speeds you can make some very detailed prints. And Creality was nice enough to send me one of these to check out and make a video about. And surprisingly it came in a wooden crate, with what looks like the retail box inside. And it seems to be packed in here pretty well. And even with this out of the box and that foam, there's a ton of foam protecting the inside of the machine as well. Along with this little box here that has all the tools and extra parts to actually assemble this machine. And this does have a glass front door so it's taped shut with a protective coating on it that you can just peel right off. And when it comes to the assembly of this machine there's not much you need to do besides putting the screen on and these little rubber feet. My printer did come with a extra hot end and extruder and this is due to some problems they were having with some earlier models which I'll talk about later. But for now I'm just going to get this thing up and running and see how it does. And my first impression of this printer at this point is that it looks and feels very high quality mostly due to the metal frame and the glass front door. It also happens to feel very solid. It's just something that I'm not used to with Creality products, like my Ender 5 S1. That's made of mostly aluminum extrusions and some acrylic pieces. And even with the enclosure on this one, it doesn't have a top. So I'm happy to see that they added a removable one to the K1. But anyways, the rest of the setup for this machine is pretty straightforward, and gone over step by step through the screen once you turn it on. I like how you need to remove three screws that are holding down the entire build plate. And you can see that they're all clearly marked using these yellow arrow stickers. And it even runs a self-check to make sure everything is working properly along with input shaping and auto bed leveling and this took about 15 to 20 minutes to finish and when it does get to the input shaping step it is going to shake the machine around a lot and make a bunch of noise so if you do get one of these don't be worried when it starts doing this but with all that done, we can look at the back of the machine. It does come with a small roll of filament, and you'll have to feed this through the filament runout sensor and then up into the hot end. And they also sent me a full roll of this filament as well. So let's actually get this thing printing. And this does have some internal storage with some pre-sliced test files to print. As you can see at the start of this print, there was red material, and this is just leftover material from testing at the factory. And it was able to finish this benching in about 16 minutes. And overall looks pretty good besides the bottom. That looks like it's missing filament in some areas. So I just printed this again, and it looks like it came out a lot better. Better. So now that I know everything's working, I'm going to start another test file, which is a articulating cat, which took about an hour and a half to complete, but came out just about perfect. So next up is a 600 millimeter per second speed test, which really shows off how fast this printer can go. And this is only a seven minute print, but it definitely highlights one of the downsides of going faster, which is the sound. So say you have this in your room and you want to print something overnight, I hope you can sleep with this sound going all night. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not quiet. Granted, you're not going to be printing at 600 millimeters per second all the time, but definitely not quiet. And most of the noise is actually coming from the large cooling fan on the side of this, so it can keep up with cooling your parts. And there's also an exhaust fan on the back of this that will run. And of course, there's fans on the hot end as well. So all of this really adds up. And when it's printing at these speeds, you can see that it's actually moving the machine around and my little table right here. So you want to make sure to put this on a stable surface. And the last test file is just to see how well it can do a single layer, which it looks like it did pretty good and it did finish but once I actually took it off of here you can see that they are not connected so this can definitely be a little bit closer to the print bed so we can have a solid sheet that being said I don't know of any way to adjust the Z offset on this machine so this will have to be adjusted in the slicer and speaking of the slicer you have two options you can use the Creality Cloud app on your phone which is also a place where you can find 3d models to print and send it over to your printer or you can use your computer with Creality Print either way you do it you can send them both over with Wi-Fi and monitor them but if you don't want to use the Wi-Fi you can always load it onto the thumb drive and just plug it into the front. And my first actual print is this little Godzilla, which only took about four hours to print. And I'm using some pink filament from Sunlu, and not the hyperfilament that Creality sent me, mostly because I want to see if it's able to print other materials at these speeds. And well, as you can see, it can, and it came out really nice. And I have seen a decent amount of people complaining that this printer cannot print anything besides the hyperfilament. And at least for me, that's not the case. With that being said, I wanted to print this 3D scan that I did using ASA, seeing that this is a fully enclosed machine. And if you want to see how I got this 3D scan, you might want to check out my video about the Revo Point Pop 3. But anyways, this was able to print with no problems in about an hour and a half. And it looks pretty good. There is some weird texture on the top, and this is just because of the file being a unclean 3D scan. But let me get this off of here and clean it up and see how it looks compared to the original object, which they're pretty spot on besides the texturing. And this does fit perfectly into the bezel where it came from, along with all of its mounting points lining up. So definitely not bad and no warping on the ASA. So as you've seen already in this video, this has a smooth magnetic build plate and it has these two alignment notches so you can easily put it back in so if you want to put a different build surface in here that is the same size it won't fit 
As you can see, it hits the two bolts in the back, but you can easily remove both of these and put any plate you want in here. And my first test using this aftermarket sheet was to use some TPU, which came out pretty nice with a little bit of stringing at the bottom. And if you don't know what TPU is, it's basically a flexible filament. But this is also where my first problem came in, because after this print, I was having nothing but under extrusion. And I could have sworn that I recorded footage of all this, but I can't find it for the life of me. But I did find some pictures. So after this started happening, I did the speed test again, and you can see that it came out after absolutely terrible. And I thought I might have had a partial clog or something like that, so I switched out the nozzle with the one from the extra hot end that I have. And it seemed to help quite a bit, but it didn't fix the problem completely, as you can see. So it was time to switch out the extruder with the extra one that they sent with this. And that seemed to fix everything, for now at least. And this is definitely concerning, seeing up to this point, I've only had about 30 hours of printing, and the extruder has gone bad. And here's a look at the extruder that went bad. You can see that one of the gears have a bend to it now, which would move things apart, making making it so it doesn't have enough grip on your filament and things won't extrude properly. And I have talked to Creality about this and they are 100% aware of this problem and have a new extruder design that I should be getting soon. That being said, I'm not the only one having this problem. Another YouTuber called Nathan Builds Robots has even designed a way to fix this problem by putting a completely different extruder on. So definitely not a good look for Creality, especially when you're trying to compete with the Bamboo Lab P1P. So I'm hoping this new extruder design will be the last of these problems, but only time will tell because they do have some nice hardware in other places, like the full color touchscreen, and the P1P having this for a screen and controls. But when it really comes down to it, both of these can be controlled to your computer or phone to the point where you don't even need to use the screen. Also, the K1 comes completely enclosed unlike the P1P, but you can always add an enclosure. But it's really going to be up to you which one of these you get, especially if they fix the extruder problem on the K1. And as of recording this, the K1 is about $650, and will come with 2 kilograms of PLA. And they're going to be releasing a max version at some point that is much bigger, and is going to be $970. But as I'm editing this video, Bamboo Lab has actually lowered the price of the P1P by $100 to $600. And I do have a feeling this has something to do with the K1 coming out. Overall, definitely a difficult choice on which one to pick. And honestly, it's really going to come down to if they can fix that extruder problem or not. And I just don't have the time to wait around for that to come in before posting this video. So I'll definitely be posting some update videos or shorts once I get the new extruder and put a good amount of print time on it. I would like to hear what you think about this down in the comments and which printer you would actually go with. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about this. But if you're looking for anything I used in this video, I'll have links to everything down in the description below. And using any of those will help support the channel as well. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.